Millennial lovers, we're on our way to the new house located in that Shanghai Center right behind me, where the only current model of the ES7 in Shanghai has been on display for a few days. We decided to check it out. We want to see how much of a difference it makes from our ET6. Let's go find out. A quick look over at the ES7 tells us that it is not an aesthetically innovative design compared to Mio's current models in the market, especially the EC6. It's more of an iteration of Mio's current SUV models coupled with its latest aesthetics on the light tone. However, what we've always liked about our EC6 is its sporty charm in the city, but this is not what the ES7 claims to be. Obviously, it claims to be more sporty on the outside and more luxurious on the inside, with several changes made to the car, including the tail light, borrowed from the ET7, what Neo calls as the double dash light. In this video, I'm going to walk you through several of the new changes made to the ES7 compared to other SUV models, especially our EC6. Even though the ES7 is in the shop today, some of its interior is not ready for display and we were not authorized to shoot the inside. So I'm gonna use the interior of this ET7 as a demonstration of how the ES7 is gonna look on the inside as basically they are the same. Uh, the first upgrade the ES7 has compared to our EC6 is Dolby Atmos. We highly recommend, which delivers every aspect of what Neil promises as the immersive sound experience. We can't show you today because of YouTube, but if you ever get a chance to test it, do remember to do that. If you don't have Dolby Atmos compatible music on your phone, click here and go to Neo Immersive Sound Channel where you get to enjoy the music and test out the high-end speakers. Next comes the upgraded cabin design, obviously with more room, but also comes with that as four passenger control over their seat position and entertainment in the back. By tapping the button on the side, passengers could raise or lower their lumbar support. They could even adjust the seat at a comfortable angle. I can't do that. For some reason, they uh, disable the function because it's on display. For example, there's uh, an autonomous control of what happens to the person sitting in front of you. You could move his seat. Or for example, if no one sits in the front, you could move the seat forward for more leg room. And you could control music. You could control if you want seat heating or massage. Or some other functions of different massage postures that you want to enjoy. Another point worth mentioning is how spacious the car is. Still, I'm in the ET7, but remember the ES7 is basically the same. So with that being an SUV, the room up on my head is going to be bigger. Now let me adjust my seat and show you how much room it allows you as if you're in a private lounge. So uh, I was gonna adjust the wheel, but uh, with the new NT2.0 system, adjusting the wheel all comes to the central control panel. So obviously it's got a bigger screen and with all the spacious room in the cockpit, you're gonna enjoy more ambient lighting from those built-in uh, lights 
that come adds more than 200 different colors for your enjoyment. Another thing that we wouldn't quite agree with is the rattan wood design, which is kind of artificial. I guess with the gray, it looks nice. But on other models, we've seen white rattan, which is at odds with Neil's traditional sleeky design of dark gray colors and meteorite aesthetics. So that's a question mark. And in that case, we still prefer our EC6 with its dark gray interior and pink seats. Intuitively, the ES7 looks like a hybrid of the ET7 on the front face and the ES6 on the back, with four unattractive humps or sensors installed on top. Some people like them, some find them an eyesore, but not those attractive looking orange brake calipers. This is the sensor on the back. This is the sensor or LiDAR in the middle and two cameras on the side for 360 degree of traffic control. Another hardware update of NEO is its own engineered tow bar installed on the back to carry along an extra trailer for camping. Unfortunately, we're tech nerds and we're not really interested in camping. The last thing I want to talk about are sensory doors. I'm sure we haven't complained about this yet. But on our EC6, we've got heavy doors that only work with good slams to shut. So one time we've left the car overnight with no me and the system running all night long, depleting the battery. We planned out for the next day just because we didn't slam the door because it was a moral dilemma. But with the new ET7 and ES7, all you need is a slight notch and the door with its magnetic sensor shuts automatically and it's gonna close the windows too. Similarly, if you wanna open the car, just tap your finger on the door handle and the door pops out automatically. That is what we think what a genuine luxury car deserves. So which model is your favorite? Right now, I'm sitting in the back of the ES6, like I said. The ES7 has only got its guts and cameras upgraded, whereas the rest looks basically the same with the current ES series. This ES6 is pretty nice. It's got very spacious trunk space, so does our EC6. But unfortunately, what we heard lately is that the ES7 will be the first SUV model to be sold in Europe and perhaps you won't be able to see this ES6 comparatively at a lower price that the ES7 will be sold at. And the next upgrade is the new software system, which is known as the NT2.0, which the ES7 is equipped with. So are NEO's latest sedan series, the ET5 and ET7. What the NT2.0 platform does is that it upgrades NEO's Neo pilot function with assisted driving with further potential to be developed into Neo autonomous driving or NAD in the future. And of course, our old EC6 is equipped with the NT1.0 system that has very limited function in terms of autonomous driving, which Neo said that they never do on their first generation platform. Uh, so we didn't even pay to install Neopilot because we wanted to wait out and see what their function could evolve in, uh, in the future. But with the new model of ES7 coming out, our EC6, which we bought only a couple of months ago, is already obsolete. Neo promises that with an extra amount of money, uh, 9,600 RMB, we could send our EC6 back to the factory for a hardware and software upgrade that would make it look similar to be having an NT2.0 system. So which model is your favorite? That's basically all we have to say about the ES7. If you wish to know more guts about Neo, please let us know. If there's any information that we haven't supplied, please leave comments and we'll catch up with you in the future.